What's up guys, it's your boy Mark, he's here back for another video on Spiritual Academy. Today we're going to be talking about Star Seeds and ET Races. Alright y'all, so first of all, I'm going to talk about Star Seed Traits. I want to pop up a video here that kind of shows you a page. Um, you can look up different pages. Like I always say y'all, everywhere you go, see what resonates with you, uh, for you and see what doesn't, right? So they have plenty of pages and all this goo goo and Bing and you can look up oh this and that but you have to see what resonates for you right because at first uh when i was going through my journey and i was trying to okay well, i'm a star seed so i'm like i always knew right i felt different i had certain i had an experience as a kid uh that i'm like now kind of getting clarification on a little bit but the thing is for me that you have to find out what resonates for you right at first i'm like okay i'm a syrian star seed you know what i'm saying you know we've had we have uh these different aspects of us right you've had you could have had a, a lifetime in lyra we have had uh syrian all these things like you could have had lifetimes anywhere and you have different aspects or different lifetime versions of you but uh, a star seed is a person that has star origins or uh, a soul that has that star origin right and a lot of us incarnate here as star seeds because we hold a lot of information a lot of wisdom a lot of light, a lot of love that can be shared throughout the world. When I first went through my journey, um, I heavily was like, okay, I'm a Syrian star seed. I've always had problems, you know what I'm saying, communicating. I've always had problems communicating that. Uh, and yeah, I just got a uh, notification there. Yeah. But first I'm like, okay, I'm a Syrian star seed. I resonate with Syrian and yeah i could have a higher syrian aspect right a syrian a syrian incarnation or is it possible that you could just be a star seed like what is it called i can't even remember spirit y'all can throw that in there. i forgot a hybrid star seed thank you where you have you will resonate with multiple star races like me you know what i'm saying i resonate with uh, syrian but heavily heavily i am a lyran star seed and i have higher aspects to angelic lyran Right? I'm still looking into these things with myself. You will always learn more. You will always shed, uh, I guess, ego depictions of what your starseed race is or what that means for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, okay, I'm a Lyran. I love, I love cats. Like, no, I'm, I'm definitely Lyran because I, I got two cats. That don't mean just because you have a cat. But uh, I, I find myself doing this. Like, I like. I'll be there, be laying down. You know how people like to kiss when they cats. Like, I'll be doing that heavy. Or I'll rub on them in my face. Like, I just feel like I have that connection to cats. Um, I mean, even when I was first starting my journey, I had a communication with my, my first cat back there who's laying down right here, Luna. Uh, but she was communicating to me telepathically. I remember that very clearly. And then she was like, uh, she was like, get him, uh, get him away from you. Get him away from me. And it was a being, I seen a being, uh, it was an etheric being, it wasn't in physical form, but I seen a being just walk off, into, I guess, walk into another dimension or walk wherever it was. And I, matter of fact, I, I want to mention about that, but I had this experience to where she was communicating to me. Uh, and this is where I had the knowledge that, oh man, I can communicate with animals. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't fully tapped into these gifts. Like, y'all don't understand how many gifts that are, are awakening or have awakened slightly that we just don't know like like i just realized i have prophetic dreams you know what i'm saying like so certain things come through like that right our gifts and i feel like our gifts are also connected to our star race as well like you could be lyran and just have the animal connection a lot of, a lot of knowledge a lot of egyptians say that lyran uh lyran beings right lyran beings whether it be feline or humanoid that's the thing we get caught up in okay lyrans are feline no there are other humanoid forms of lyrans right we have evolved as the human species we haven't always looked like how we look today you know what i'm saying like we're fully activated we look completely angelic okay we know i don't even want to bring that into human perspective because it probably just can't be understood in the human subjective ego mind right? all right y'all my bad i'm back i don't know my cat just jumped up and made something fall so maybe maybe you know what i'm saying i feel like sometimes that'd be clarification some things be clarification but uh like i feel like that was clarification to get my attention on what i was saying could it, it could be true as well because like i said we could be, we could be like okay we have lyra and syrians right people always throw up 
uh, depictions of what these beings look like, but you can't really like people. People can tap. I am. There's people that are very gifted, high, very highly gifted that actually see these beings and just try to bring in an artwork of the physical realm of how they look. But they they can look completely different depending on your perception and awareness of consciousness at that time. So just be aware of that. Next, I want to talk about this before we get into the other so subjects. Um, these beings, these so-called ET races, are not actual ET races. That's uh, these words that we use, these titles, these 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 um words and titles that we put on things are not what it really is. Like everybody's like, okay, ascension. That word is not really what it really is. This is just how we communicate, right? Because we because we haven't tapped into that telepathic word or back into that deep inner knowing that we're still elevating to. But these are just words we use to try to explain it in, in our world, in our you know words. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're wrong. They're right for us at the moment. But as we elevate, we start to see things differently depending on your own journey uh, and stuff like that. But next we're gonna talk about childhood experiences. All right, y'all. So this is what I want to talk about, okay? Because I've I had a I've had a couple of childhood experiences of not just about okay ET races, but just that kind of signaled to me that I was different, okay? So I remember this time I was very young, like elementary, kindergarten, first grade, like you know what I'm saying? I, around that kindergarten, first grade to second, okay? So it was in between those first three years of school. But I had this experience and I remember I was walking out because how it was and, and my house was like connected to another house and it was like kind of like a, uh, not a condo y'all, but y'all know how y'all have how like duplexes. Yeah, it was kind of like a duplex, but it wasn't a duplex. It was just a part of that house that we lived in at the bottom, right? So uh, we had the big main house and we had that smaller house here. and. We lived there, right? And in the background, in the back, it had the whole backyard. It had bamboo, uh, a lot of nature in the back, right? And I remember me walking from my room to the backyard where all the bamboo and all the nature was. And I remember two huge beings, y'all. And in my mind, obviously, I'm not aware at that time. Well, I'm aware. You know, when you're in between those ages, you are very highly aware. But you just can't understand certain things, right? We don't have that understanding sometimes. Um, depending on the programming you go through during those stages in your life, like some people don't have to go through so much, they don't go through a lot of um, programming during those stages because either their parents are more aware or they just that's their experience that they just choose not to, right? But yeah, it's like when I, when I went through this, I went outside, I walked outside, and I seen. These two beings, right? They, they like, they were like two huge, tiny spiders, like big spiders, like, but they were very long. They were very long, okay? But they were like, they, to me, I'm like, okay, these are spiders, fam. You know what I'm saying? Let me get away, but they were huge. I'm talking about, they were tall, okay? Taller than, taller than me at that. Obviously, I'm little, but they were tall, bro. I'm telling you for a fact, right? They were tall, and I was just standing there, right? And they were walking up to me, right? They were walking from outside towards me. And people, like, I haven't told anyone about this. I think I experienced this. I, I haven't told anyone about this. But I remember seeing these beings walking towards me. And I was just freaked out. I was like, bro, let me get this. <laughs> I ran to my room. I was like, no, I don't want this. I remember pulling my uh, cover over it. But I remember a hand. Like, it was like, a, you know how they say spirit touches us and it's like a, a slight touch. It was like that, like someone's hand was going over my covers. You know what I'm saying? Like going over my covers, like I could feel someone there. Whether they was just trying to, confirmation. Whether they, was, they were just trying to um, comfort me because they knew I didn't understand. Spirit, y'all gonna have to call me. Y'all gonna, gonna have to confirm this today. Do another bling on my phone, confirm that. But, um. Uh, yeah, man, I was just like, dude, yo, yo, I had experienced this, and I was like, no, go away, or something, like, I feel like I was aware of the being. Look at that, it's a little thing just shifted, and I almost fell down more, it's confirmation, man, I'm telling y'all, but I felt this, this, um, I felt, I felt this, and I felt this hand going over, I was like, no, I don't want this, no, no, no. 
Uh, and then I remember them going away, but I remember feeling their presence and actually feeling something going up in my cover, either to get my attention or whatever. I don't feel like they were negative beings because when they was walking up to me, I sat there for a good minute, right? And this is just my experience, but a lot of us experience um, these child experiences. They don't have to be like you being on a ship, you know what I'm saying? Or you uh, thinking 11-11. Uh, <laughs> It don't have to be you on the ship. Some of y'all could have had dreams when you was on the ship, and you was like, and it really wasn't a dream, and you were actually there. So you just, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially when you're a kid, you're very highly aware at during those stages, especially those first three years of school, y'all. You are very highly aware, right? And it, it continue as you continue through school, the program continues to be more deep, right? So when you are adult, you have to become responsible for yourself. Um, to heal what you're going through. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, the vibration, the energy is so high, it's, it's, it's like messing up the video. But um, yeah, it's like you, you go through these experiences. Another experience I had was my intuition being top tier, right? It was, I was with my cousins and we were walking our neighborhood. We were doing something. I don't think we were doing nothing too bad. Like we weren't doing it bad. We wasn't bad kids, you know what I'm saying? Like we did lose here and there, but it wasn't like, you know, but we was walking and I can't remember fully what we were doing, but we were doing something that we were near a house or something that we wasn't supposed to. And I got this gut feeling. I got this gut feeling to, y'all, let's go, y'all. I feel like the police gonna come or something. Like, let's go. So we chose to walk we, and it was this it was this path in between my uncle's house where it would lead to a park. Like it was actually like a nature walk in there but it wasn't big it was just personal to us right because we knew about it he would probably took that path too because it lead to like this kroger plaza and stuff like that but uh we walked up there and we as we looked down because you know once we got up to where we were y'all uh it was like this look down, so you could see our house you could see everything like us a little further down uh because it was like trees and everything but we could see as soon as we got up to that top a police patrol car came straight through and everybody was looking at me like my exit like my intuition as a kid y'all like pay attention to the experiences you've had like go back at don't bring that energy into the future but reflect on that because a lot of information be hidden in our past like that we really don't look at sometimes like i've had i've had straight straight dreams of where i was just a mermaid and i was just swimming in the water like i could have had a syrian life or, or a mermaid incarnation somewhere i don't you know what i'm saying but that's the thing i was always interested into i remember i used to watch the show if y'all remember back in the uh mid 2000s um uh mid yeah mid, mid 2000s uh this show called h2o where it was about these three mer mermaid girls you know what i'm saying and they were just uh i keep hearing this song i got a special power y'all remember that go back bro that song is gonna be fine i might watch that today but uh, I, I used to watch this show and I used to be like, oh, wouldn't that be so cool to go through the water? Like, oh, that'd be so, you know, and, and obviously sometimes the shows we watch reflect in our dream state, but I don't believe that's the case in my experience. I had a straight up dream. I was a mermaid swimming in the water fan. Okay. So I believe that our lifetimes always show up in our dream state. Sometimes if you've had dreams of certain things happen, like I've literally had dream dreams of being in, in like a, a slit like you know during slavery the 1800s 1700s where i was highly tuned in and there are beings and people around me that didn't want me or to be aware and i remember like in the dream i was i was able to see where everybody who was racist was around me like not to go there. It's like that sound like not to go there you know how in, in games they show like uh they show you like um what is it like indicators like okay somebody over there somebody over, it was exactly like that it was like i seen that but when i seen i seen the angry man with a pitchfork right and i feel like whether this was an incarnation i had a different name they call me by a different name so this could have been the incarnation i had hundreds of years ago you know what i'm saying so it's just yo be aware of y'all childhood experiences this gonna be a long video <laughs> be aware of y'all childhood experiences okay next i want to talk about inner knowing so i've kind of talked about this a little bit about the police patrol and my intuition coming online uh in that situation yo this this bit is bugging out the energy is going crazy here okay uh but uh sometimes we just have an inner knowing that we're different uh yeah, it's just the internet, okay, man, I'm different, or something is weird about this, or family, like, I don't, like, you know what I'm saying, and, and 
just go off your own experiences. Don't don't chastise your experience or don't be like, oh no, that was nothing. Oh no, that was nothing. Clarification again, alright? But don't go off of that. Because sometimes it's a lot of truth and it's a lot of clarity in our past that that's why sometimes spirit pushes the hermit to reflect a lot on past stuff. And most of the times it's like recent past or like a year, two years ago. But sometimes we need to go all the way back to the beginning where it all started, right? And really look at the experiences we've had and look at it sideways because there's clarity there. You know what I'm saying? There, there's truth there in that experience. Obviously, the end of the day when we was there, we was not aware of programming family. So we was just experiencing, okay, the human life, right? So-called the human experience of not knowing our true God itself, our true star set, star seed, ET, so called alien, which is not really alien, nothing is alien. Beings, aliens, so called aliens, been on this planet way before us, right? Way before the human race. So let's not even talk about that, right? They've been here, we've created planets, we've done so much in the past, right? But, um, um, but yeah, trust your inner knowing, yo. If you was a kid and you knew, oh man, I'm different, or oh man, like something just don't something about this experience is just blocking like i was always aware like even when i was to get wh whoopings when i was a kid like obviously this wasn't true but it was so-called true like it was it was kind of true but i used to get whippings and this this one uh thought that came up to me man people are really just whipping souls like you're just whipping souls really that's that's where it really hurts right our body store that trauma but our soul experienced that you know what i'm saying like and that's why we have to go through such deep inner healing because we're not just in our body, but we're, we're like I, I, this this girl I forgot who it is. They was like when we're doing this healing, we're, when we're doing this inner healing. I have, sometimes I have to slow down because I be going so fast, the energy. But um, but she said when we're doing this inner healing, we're removing plaque from the soul, things that build up, right? Because. And, and another thing, we're not fixing us, right? We're not fixing us. We're perfect the way we are. We're removing and letting go of things that were never truly us, right? That makes us feel that we have to fix or or, or do something that that's gonna fix us. We're perfect. We just have to release what that what does what isn't us, right? Because the true us is perfect. It's perfect. So if you see yourself as imperfect, or you see yourself as I have to fix this about myself. It's not you're not wrong. You have to you have to fix and release the traumas and things that you've held onto you that you had to the person you had to become, right? You had to release that, right? So that's another thing I want to talk about today. Next we're gonna be talking about the sense of not belonging. So for Star Seeds here, this is heavy for us. Okay, I've never had this as a kid, right? Until like now I'm starting to like man, I stand out. I'm, man, I'm different. Like I always knew I was different. I was always into magic and um halloween town and all these these disney movies i was always into the the harry potter and the anime i was always into the magical side of things because i'm magical right <laughs> but uh yeah we're all magical right we're magical beings supernatural beings right but um yeah everyone have this sense of not belonging some of y'all as a kid just knew this is not my mom this is not my dad what what's going on you know what i'm saying so, like uh, it just depends on your experience. I've never had the experience, and um, spirit will clarify this for me. But I always felt like I had a huge role in the, either the creation of Earth or the creation uh, or being here during the beginnings of humanity seeding here. I had some part to play in this, and that's why I don't feel I don't feel that I'm not like. I don't belong here because I've just I've helped create this in some way. Like I've even went through meditations when I'm like, okay, what connection I have to Egypt? Like, were I there during the pyramids being created? And then whether this was my higher self or my team, probably my higher self, but my team or higher self came in and was like, bro, you helped build the pyramids. Straight up in meditations. And I was like, oh, okay, and now I'm just realizing I have Egyptian incarnations, you know what I'm saying? And then I realized that the map that we use today is capped. Right, it's cap, and sometimes some of the places you're in are at lastly Egypt. Right, it's just it's just a version exotic map. I'm gonna throw it up here, and I'll post it in the link below. Y'all wanna go check out the like the bigger map, but I'll post it here. It may not you know be in so detail, but I'll post that in the description so you guys can go zoom in. But the map that we use today 
is lies. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of people, government throw out lies in these maps. So this is where Georgia is. This is no right because we all know nothing is new under the sun, bro. And I've seen the exotic map, and I've seen that right whether it resonates for you or not or whether it's true for you or not take what resonates leave the rest but what resonates for me in some parts is that they have different places on that like they say okay atlanta you got uh jerusalem in atlanta egypt in atlanta right like it's certain places that you're in right now that you've incarnated here before right that's called new places now but you could have you you could be living in Egypt right now and this calling you in this saying Atlanta. It's Atlanta, man. Nah, this is the old Jerusalem, the old Egypt, right? They have the Egypt and so-called Africa and wherever that's at. The oh, this is Egypt, these are that's pyramids all around the world. And the most pyramids is in the United States of America. Mexico. Everywhere around the world there's pyramids. So why do y'all specifically detain on one part of the world as old Egypt? pyramids okay they have the statues it's nice right we have history here right but the thing is i feel like they focus you on this one spot okay this is what they just no bro we were all over this plane we were all over this plane dude we were everywhere okay so don't let don't let them trick you to feel like okay egypt was right here in this area egypt we were egyptians were everywhere on the plane we wasn't just categorizing one spot you know what i'm saying so that's another thing, okay? So that sense of not belonging. Some of us have, uh, uh, as kids, we love history. I love history, right? Love his story, right? Because it talked about these ancient civilizations. It talked about it, right? And there's truth in his story, history, right? There's truth in it, but there's lies all around. And it's just learning to discern. Now, man, I know I've had lifetime, many lifetimes here, right? But I feel... I feel that I've, I've been here like in the beginning stages of this planet or just during where this planet was at its height um, in consciousness, okay? So I, I was definitely here, right? Whether I was a, a, a other um, race of being, Lyrian, Syrian, whoever, but I know I was here during these, during these stages. I know I've had incarnations in Egypt, Atlantis, somewhere, you know what I'm saying? We've been everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, but that sense of not belonging. Some of us have that strong sense of not belonging. That strong sense of, man, this is my mom, this is my dad. I don't belong here. Or feeling of wanting to go home, right? That feeling because you know you have star origins. Origins that extend outside of this physical dense reality, y'all. Right? And this sounds spiritual so sad that heavily resonated with me back in the day. Still do to this to this day. But I was watching one of these videos. He was like, bro, why? So y'all get so attached to this physical life, this physical vessel, this, this physical reality, right? We're here to experience this. We're here to have fun. We're here to uh, share our love and light. We're here to serve in the most positive, high vibrational way, right? Um, but we're also here to have fun, to enjoy the experience, right? When this system, when this system crash, when it already is, right? This whole matrix is crashing, bro. you know, facts. So the shit that we used to love and to eat and to do, like, it don't matter because the shit that we did in, in the galactic society was way bigger than that shit. Traveling, and don't get me wrong, it's fun to travel to Paris and India. Yeah, it's fun. Go have your experiences now before the system crumbles and we rebuild this new earth because there will not be these experiences. We're going to build way bigger things. Why would you want to travel everywhere on one plane and feel like and limit yourself to one plane of travel of seeing of experience when well, you have a whole omniverse to explore you know what i'm saying so that's one thing i want to talk about here um don't get me wrong I, i'm i'm a traveler i want to travel you know what i'm saying cruises seven day cruises week cruises i want to go to japan italy you know what i'm saying i'm going to go to japan italy bora bora dubai you know what i'm saying like everywhere i want to travel everywhere dude. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like we have so lot, so so much so-called time, right? In this reality, time doesn't really exist. Fox do. But the thing is, is, we have we this world and this 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 physical existence is temporal. So we have we have to live this shit to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? So um, we have to enjoy. And then uh, shout out to Christy again, y'all, because now that she popped up, oh yeah, I'm gonna show your videos to your kids. It's like because. At first it's kind of like PG 
and I wasn't really cursing a lot. I'm gonna chill on the cursing from now on. Sometimes it just pops out, you know what I'm saying, to give emphasis, but yeah, whatever. But anyway, y'all, for the kids out there, all right? Yeah, but, you know, traveling throughout the world and stuff like that, enjoy your experience, y'all. Enjoy it. But believe me, when we return, which we've always been this galactic society, we've always been a galactic citizen, right? Because this is this is just who we are, bro, right? This is just who, who we are. We're going to be traveling universes, omniverse. We're going to be traveling. We've been traveling with starships, star fleets. But like, we've been everywhere, bro. Like, we're not just limited to experiences on this planet. People have the ability to astral travel right now to go to these different planets, to go to these star, to really do this. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, um, go back. I'll link the video right here. It's called, uh, Why Would You, I think it's uh, The Truth About Video Games, right? Why would you want to play a video game or, or level up the video game? Don't get me wrong. Video games are my thing. Hogwarts Legacy, I'm definitely hopping on that game and I'm going to be playing the heck out of that game, right? And in, in, in moderation, but it's just like, bro, we wow, enjoy this world, explore the hell out of this, explore the heck out of this world, okay? But we have a whole universe to explore. We have, we have places we haven't even explored yet, right? Uncharted places, you know, and this is why the universe is so huge. We live in an omniverse, bro. We don't get me wrong, there's probably billions of history of us being here and us existing in physical life and all that. But the, the, the universe, the omniverse is full of potential. That there, there are other universes we probably haven't even explored yet that we're still exploring. Right? I'm like, hey, bro, as soon as y'all land, as soon as the ET Rage land, take me. We're going to different universes, man. We, I'm in it. You know what I'm saying? Let me sign that, con that contract right now. Let's go ahead and do this start this contract right now, right? I want to explore the the omniverse when once we return back to our our higher God self, right? That mind, that that inner knowing, our source self, right? So like, bro, and when we are fully activated, back to original our God, who we truly are, yo. Sign that contract. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to go on an adventure. Like after this Earth experience, I have to come here. And experience this which is a beautiful experience right even the so-called pain the traumas it, it's good right because we experience these to elevate as a soul right so this is a beautiful experience to be here right 28 28 o'clock but hey bro i want to i'm going to travel uncharted universes i want to you know like it's ex, like heavy exploration like you know what I'm saying? I don't know where my soul path is going to lead me next in the next incarnation. We not even worry about that. We in the now in this incarnation and what we can do now, right? But the next thing I want to talk about is the galactic history, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, y'all. So this is galactic history right here on the page, y'all. Um, like I said, if it resonates with you, take it, go within, meditate, and integrate that into what you want to believe. It's very highly important that we really go within our own selves to see what resonates for our own soul, right? Because it may not resonate with you. Some may resonate, but some information be like, um, I may not resonate with that. So this is just um, some of these things that resonate with me, okay? So the, about the galactic history, if y'all don't know who this is, this is Debbie Solaris. She does Akashic readings. I'll be doing a video on Akashic, uh, Akashic records soon. Probably, um, yeah, y'all be y'all be probably seeing this on the 21st around there. So. Yeah, check out for that video. But uh, you know, y'all be seeing the classic reading video on the uh, two first. But yeah, galactic history. So um, I've talked about this before. I did a podcast. Go and check that. I'll link that right here up above in the card, so you guys can go check that uh, live out where I talk about this more in depth. We're just gonna be glossing over today. So um, so far of the information that I've learned, it can always be more to that or things I'm missing. So just check what resonates but so far from what i've learned and things that i'm still learning we always we always hear the elohim right the elohim so we have the source the source source god whatever you want to call it the high, uh, most high divine source energy whatever you want to call that right right so there there is just source source right in this infinite omnipresence energy right uh and from my perspective, we had been we had 
split because we were always in one. There is the divine mother God consciousness, divine father God consciousness. This is divine feminine, divine masculine of the source, right? So they say here we can go to galactic history. Let's go down to Lyra Vega. Boom. So here we go. Here it go. The splitting off into duality consciousness by source exhibiting itself physically by splitting of the Milky Way from the Andromeda Galaxy. Now the Milky Way is so called our galaxy. Obviously these are just names. So don't go, don't look so much into the names because the titles and name, we're not even supposed to be using this language. Okay? So don't tie too in on it. But these are just words that help us explain it, right? From a human point of view. So as our consciousness expands, we start to, to see the information that we learn at a higher level. So just take what resonates. But she said, the splitting off into a duality consciousness by source exhibited itself physically by the splitting of the Milky Way from the Andromeda Galaxy. For this reason, she said, I always call the Andromeda Galaxy the Mother Galaxy, right? So this is the divine uh, feminine consciousness, right? That divine feminine energy of the source, the whole source, right? So we have the coming together. So source it is the embodiment of every living thing in creation right now. Like we are all source. We are all parts, sparks from the source. We are all source, right? That's why everyone says we are all one, love and light. We are all one, right? Because we are all one. All of us, we just did, which is not splitting from source because we we're never split from source. But we split from that energy of being in a whole source, right? Not having that experience, being together, that wholeness with source, right? Which we can still be, we still are, right? But we chose to go off, to branch off from that, to have our own experiences. So in that way, source chose to split itself into many different parts, perspectives, energies, right? So that's why we have these different beings. We have not just these other easy races, we have animals, right? We have plants, we have birds, um, we have all the animal kingdom, all the plant kingdom, all these kingdoms in our world that make up our world, the air, the water, the fire, right? The earth, everything is a part of source God or um, the most high, whatever you want to call it, divine source energy, right? So we are all source, we are all source. There is no separation, it's all an illusion, right? And this is why we have this thing going on in the world where they say, okay, if you're this, you're separate from him because y'all have two different beliefs. Or you're this, you're separate from him because he's white. Or you're separate from him because he's this, right? But we are not separate. There are all illusions of the 3D physical reality. We are never separate from source. We are never separate from each other. Yes, we have different skin pigments because we have different DNA. There are other beings, other races here as well Right, they have different DNA structures than we do. Not saying they're completely different from us. They're not. But their genetic makeup is different. Just like if we was fully activated right now, right, to our, our authentic light crystalline being, compared to us in a whole Lyra, right? We would look completely different. Even though we still have their DNA within us, we would look different because of our DNA makeup, right? And our in our environment, right? Our, our world around the shape. So, and this is something that Isis Wisdom spoke about that I want to speak about. She was like, bro, when you go to Syria, you look like a Syrian, right? If you go to Lyra, you look like a Lyra because the environment, the earth, the planet, the, the, the environment of the Lyra planets, the environment of the Syrian planets, and how it is, how it affects you, kind of like, I would say mutates your body. Like, you know how we, we how they say we put our hands in the water and our hands get shriggly? Like, like what is that, right? That's our body adapting to the environment, okay? So that's why she was like, okay, when you go to Syria, because our body uh, uh, adapts to these environments, going to a serious planet is a way higher vibration of energy than Earth right now. Even though we're evolving and Earth is ascending to 5D, right? If we was to go to Syrian, the environment, the energy, the atmosphere, Right around our electromagnetic field and uh, in, in, in our energy field would change because we're in a new environment energetically, spiritually as a soul, right? So it would change our our physical makeup. Even though we're already we're already shapeshifters, we could change and though we have all these gifts and abilities, dude. We have we out of this world, okay? We have all these abilities, okay? But moving on, it's gonna be a long video, okay? Please watch to the end. I'm telling you, this is nugget 
dimes in here, okay? Gems. Okay, but she's like, for this reason, I always call and Germany Mother Galaxy. Okay, close. During this time, the very first Stargate is our Milky Way Galaxy. So this is take a resonance, leave the rest. I may not I don't fully resonate with that either, but go within your own self, meditate, ask your guys, right? See if this resonates for you because everyone has a different perspective on things right just like the atlantean flood people say the whole thing was flooded people say only half of it was flooded you know what i'm saying and parts and remnants of so-called lumeria as well just like debbie solaris says go to her youtube debbie solaris on youtube she talks about how there's still remnants of lumeria in part of like the easter islands and part of uh hawaii so that way some of the higher vibrations from the Lumerian still are in the waters and around that area. So take a resonance. But there could still be remnants of it. It depends on your perspective and your soul experience in these different timelines of existence, right? So moving on. All right. So this is why she always call it the mother galaxy because so-called uh andromeda galaxy is the mother galaxy the mother divine feminine energy aspect of source right which is also one source embodies both the divine master and divine feminine okay take what resonates and so-called split off to have their own experiences to create right so let's move forward uh but she said, okay, the first target is our Milky Way galaxy was created. The Antari, the Antari is supposed to be uh, uh, links, links of stargates that, that go throughout the uh, world. I say Scorpion constellations. We'll get more into detail about stargates in the Antari section. Okay, so we're not going to go too much into this, but here we go. In the beginning, source, only source existing in its infinite omnipresence. So that energy of the divine source energy right it says source decided one day in its infinity of time that it was lonely and they wanted to create alternate aspects of itself us right animals plants everything in existence air water fire earth everything in existence y'all even the planets the universe everything that exists out in in our 3d realm and outside of our 3d realm right okay source decided okay okay yeah source first split itself into two different aspects of itself creating the alpha mother god galaxy represented astronomically by the andromeda galaxy right that's why the andromeda galaxy we can talk about andromedans are more divine feminine aspect which is more spiritually aspected okay that divine feminine is our spiritual side our spiritual insights right that spiritual side of us that soul energy of us right and we have that divine masculine which is more intellectual which is more technology based which is more action protection right that energy right which is that divine feminine is that coming from that heart space right that infinite love that is all within us right that infinite knowledge the infinite love right that that divine feminine aspect that creates that divine feminine creates and births right new things new energies right and the divine masculine protects what that divine feminine energy creates protects and builds it's the architect right Divine feminine in that way you can see it. That's just an analogy, okay? But that divine masculine is is more of an architect, that built master builder, that master protector of that energy of creation, okay? And divine feminine is that master builder, the master builder, master creator. While he is the architect, which is creating. Okay, boom. How can we add this more technology based, right? Uh, not more technology based, but balance into both, okay? So as the divine feminine creates and births, the divine masculine protects, okay? The divine masculine protects and helps the uh, the divine feminine build and create, right? Just like I said, you have different master numbers, right? You have the master creator, that's the divine feminine energy. The master builder, because the masculine helps build on to what the feminine has created, okay? So this is what we're gonna move forward to, okay? Boom. So uh, that's pretty much it. So here goes we here goes to Elohim. Take a resonance, leave the rest. Some of it may not resonate with you, but this is just information I want to share for those it may help because it definitely resonates. Some of it definitely resonates for me as well as being the Lyran Star Seed. Okay, but or yeah. Okay, so the Elohim founder co-creator group decided as a group collective 
that they wanted to co-create life just like Source. They decided to start their uh, experimentation in a tiny constella constellation of Lyra right here, okay? For a couple of reasons. One, it was to start uh, locate starts from lo uh, located fairly close to the galactic center. Two, and it had conditions most favorable for physical life. So we want to end that right there. We're not going to go too too deep in there, but I just want to talk about more of the beginning. We've already talked about the draconian wars and what happened, how we got here, and fell in frequency, right? So yeah. Uh, and if y'all want more on this, like we could do certain episodes where we like this could be just part one of the episode if y'all want this definitely comment down below and i'll me probably meditate on it if i want this to become like a series uh and we can go more in depth and stuff about that but yeah um take what resonates and leave the rest is just information that i was pulled to share today uh so just take a resonate if you don't resonate with you you can be like okay not really me throw that out the window right i might resonate with the the divine feminine masculine assets but I don't resonate with Lyra starting off that. Yeah, so the confirmation. So just take what resonates, right? Same with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, when I first started, I just believed everything. Now, I'm very particular and like intricate. And I'm learning to be more intricate with what I believe because it, it, it affects us in certain ways, okay? So just take what resonates and leave the rest, okay? But that's all I want to talk about with that. All right, y'all. So next uh, is tie into this life. So what does this star seed and ET races tie into this life? Okay, what does that resonate for us as a whole, right? So, like I've talked about before, right? Time does not exist. Time is it just does not exist, right? We are we come here on this three D experience to experience, okay, time or this this illusion of limitation or or a lack. There is no limitations. There is no limitations, bro. Okay, but since we're on the 3D physical, the lowest density that we can be at 3D, um, which that's you know, okay. Manifestation takes slower on this room. That's because of our frequency. Let's say you are a frequency. You are just tapped in, right? You are fully activated. You can literally do it, whatever you want, right? As far as your gifts fully online. You could be able to manifest things way faster. So it does not matter. Like, yeah, the 3D is more dense. So it takes more preparation when it comes to our spirit gods as well as our higher self and us that incarnate, right? Which we are all levels, right? But this is our incarnate, our avatar, the vessel, the avatar that we use, which I love my body, okay? Love your body. Appreciate your body, okay? But, um, yeah, it's this energy of we are... The incarnate and I, i'm gonna show this clip of video right here I'm, I'm gonna have to download that junk somehow to show y'all this video but they show how uh it all the way back to read to, to uh your your incarnate which is us physically on this planet to our soul to our oversoul to our rishi to our avatar avatar and to man Giannis, the Giannis part of ourselves that are beyond time right so there are multi-dimensional levels of self, of, of 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 our soul, our self, right? Just like we have different aspects, right? Those aspects are different incarnations, uh, different aspects of you. So you may have an angelic aspect of you out there somewhere, an angelic that exists on the nine-dimensional round, uh, the ninth-dimensional round. You just you don't know, you know what I'm saying? So just tap into that. You have the ability right now, right? Because time does not exist in high realms. Everything is existing in the now. Every incarnation you've ever lived is still existing in the now on a whole nother timeline right now with you, right? So you have the ability to tap into these incarnations, right? I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of a lot of these incarnations are very they're highly aware that we're existing right now. And I feel like it's nothing I want to share about deja vu. Because let listen, if we've lived lifetimes before and we've been aware that we are still we're living other lifetimes too in other timelines. You know what I'm saying? So We've been aware of this lifetime during our past lifetime, so-called past lifetime that are existing now, but we're just shifting in a, new t in a different timeline, okay? We're shifting in a different timeline where we're existing in this avatar and this experience, right? But we've lived a lifetime, let's say, 20 million years ago, right? In that timeline, that version of you is still existing right now. That was aware, okay, I'm going to live this timeline in the future. But they uh, was aware of this lifetime that they will eventually live in, right? And that's why I feel like we have deja vu because we've already seen these experiences before we chose to 
uh, shift into that incarnation version of us. And that's why I feel like all these timelines exist. And all we do is just project our consciousness into these timelines to experience these other versions of us. Like that, like I'm telling y'all, that's exactly what, what resonates with me because they're all existing. We are consciousness. We are light beings, right? Source. We, we are literally our source selves, right? And I, and I just feel like these incarnations, these temporary in, incarnations we experience are just us projecting our consciousness into the timeline. We're just, I feel like we, we project our consciousness into this timeline to experience this incarnation to um, 12, 22 on the clock to experience this lifetime and, and to fulfill our purpose in this timeline. It's just simple as that. We're in, in, and it could be way deeper than that, but that, that just came into play in this video. Ah, that just came through in this video. So we, we, we straight up like projecting our consciousness into this timeline to fulfill this purpose in this timeline right and to ele to elevate this timeline and, and to elevate this part of ourselves right to higher timelines like we're and that's why they say the ascension and it's this dream i had where in higher realms or in the realm before you incarnate the realm before you incarnate or around that realm there is no time every version of earth is existing at once every version Every version of Sirius, every version of Lyra is existing right now in one. There is no separation. When you incarnate in 3D, we are not aware. We, we are, our, our vibration and consciousness have to be at a certain level to perceive these subtle realms that's all around, that's been around us since we've been born, right? But dude, every, every timeline of Earth is existing right now. And that's why people say we quantum jump timelines, we do. Right, we do we do this every day by our words, by our actions, and that and it's let's solve. You were like, okay, bro, shall I wear a blue shirt or red shirt? You chose a red shirt. It's a version of you that chose that blue shirt that existing right now. So it and man, it's so deeper, bro. And it's and that's just what I know at this current consciousness, energetic, vibrational level I'm at now. If I'm at a higher level, I might perceive that completely different. We can we. We could be given all this information about the ascension, all this back when we was like 15, 14, 13, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 okay, we understand at that level, but now we're 27, 28, we're way more advanced, way more aware, and we just perceive that information completely different because of our consciousness level and our vibrational frequency. So, man, listen, all these incarnations tie into this life, all these experiences tie into this life because we've experienced these other lifetimes to have the experiences, to have the gifts and the abilities that we've learned in these lifetimes that are still existing now, to pull all this into this lifetime and like kind of like anchor these energies, anchor these experiences, anchor all this energy into this lifetime to give us, to give that incarnation version of us in this timeline that boosts to elevate our own timeline and merge all timelines into one, okay? So that's all I want to shoot. This was a heavy 50 minute video, man. I'm gonna have to, well, I was like straight, like it wasn't really going to be edited, so this is going to be a long video, y'all. So, if you're watching the end, comment down below, two hearts, so I know you. Matter of fact, nah, don't put two hearts. Comment down below the uh, glasses emoji, the, the dark glasses emoji, the cool emoji, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the glasses emoji, y'all. Comment down there below. But anyway, y'all, again, my name is Marcus. Thank you for tapping into this episode of Spiritual Academy. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm out of here. Peace.